Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Welcome, everyone, to Community Bible Study and to those watching online as well. We're going to continue our temperament series. We're on part 30. Y'all believe that part 30? Isn't that amazing? Amen. Are we there? Are we here this evening? Well, all right. Those watching online, welcome. Amen. We're glad that you're tuning in. <laughs> We're discussing the phlegmatic temperament, and I do need a handout for myself as well. Hallelujah. Does anybody need a handout? Raise your hand, and Brother Dale will bring one to you. Hallelujah. And there it is. Amen, amen. Y'all been enjoying the temperament class? Y'all been enjoying Christian psychology? Amen, amen. Has it been helping anybody? We've been learning about the phlegmatic. And we know that the phlegmatic is calm. I'll let uh, Brother Dell finish because I want you guys paying attention so that way we can all be on the same page. How about that? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Are we good? Everybody got a copy? Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Is that my brother back there? Good to see you, brother. Amen. See you smiling back there. Love it. Everybody here, hallelujah. Praise Jesus. This brother over there, hallelujah. All right, y'all ready? Are we good, Brother Dale? All right, we're discussing the phlegmatic temperament. Who can tell me some of the strengths of the phlegmatic? Brother Isaac. He's peaceful. At all costs, he's peaceful. You're not going to get into the phlegmatic's Kool-Aid because they're always at peace. You're not going to bring mess around them because they're always at peace. Peace at all costs. Amen. Brother Luciano, what do you got, brother? Good. I like that. I wish y'all could have caught that. Y'all not going to be able to hear that online, but he said that Brother Luciano said that they can flip in and out. How many knows they're flip phlegmatic? That's not a bad thing. It just means that they can wear any hat when it comes to the temperament. They can put on the choleric hat. They can put on the sanguine hat. They can put on the melancholy hat. So the phlegmatic is the only temperament that can go in and out when they choose to. Amen? Whatever environment calls for it, they can step into that environment and be whatever they need to be. Isn't that a beautiful temperament? I want some of that. I pray for some of that. I still haven't gotten some of that. Hey, you are who you are and how Christ made you. Amen. And you got to rejoice in how God made you. Can I get an amen? And so we learned about the phlegmatic. He's also calm, easygoing. Never seems to get ruffled no matter what the circumstances are. Amen. But what are some of the weaknesses of the phlegmatic? Brother Christian, what do you got? They're slow pace. They're sluggards. They're sluggish. They're slug-like. Amen. Y'all know what a slug is? They don't move very fast. They move at a snail's pace. They'll get there. But it's going to take them a little longer. Amen? And you can't push them. You can't move the snail faster than what it's able to move. Or they're, I don't know, they'll shrink back in their shell and say, not, not today. I I'm moving at my pace. So sometimes God has to get a hold of those temperaments that are made that way and get a little Holy Ghost fire under them to get them moving where God needs to have them. Amen? And that... That kind of goes along with all of our temperaments, right? Sometimes the fire has to be poured out, which is the refining fire, which means trials. Amen? Trials are good for us. They get our eyes on Jesus. They also tend to be spectators. Listen to this. Well, does anybody have any other strengths or weaknesses besides the sluggish? They're uninvolved. And that gets to my place where I'm going to talk about spectators. They're uninvolved. They like to spectate. They like to observe. They like to watch others so they can tend to become more critical 
more judgmental because they're always watching and they're uninvolved. They're the ones that will pick apart everything that I'm doing up here as I'm ministering. They're good at doing that. They, they can critique like nobody's business. And they're uninvolved. Amen. Isn't that amazing? They also tend to be spectators in life and they try not to get involved with the activities of others. I won't get involved unless it's absolutely necessary. Amen. In fact, it is difficult for them to be motivated to move beyond their daily routine. Does that make sense for some of you temperaments out there? If they got a daily routine that they're already accustomed to, they're the ones that are going to be most difficult to move when they're already used to doing something in their daily re routine. So they're not going to be too motivated when you have something else that's going to interrupt their daily routine. So don't get offended when the phlegmatic just doesn't go and join what you're doing right away. Okay, so they're going to be uninvolved. It messes with their daily routine. Now, if they have nothing to do that day, you might get a hold of them because it's not interrupting the routine. Are you hearing me, church? You got to know who your friends are so you don't get offended. That's just how they're made. Nope, that's not a part of my routine today. You know, so if somehow you give them a notice a week out and they schedule and pencil you in, then you're a part of their routine. And so you get to have you get to have fun because now you're in their daily routine. Amen. That makes sense. <laughs> y'all, I just love it when y'all are laughing because, you know, joy bring, truth brings joy. Y'all know that? It does. When you start laughing, it's because, man, they're all over me. You can't make this stuff up, church. It's not a good quality, but it's something we got to work on, right? <laughs> like, Because God has a way of interrupting our daily routine, doesn't he? We have our agendas. We have our daily routine, but the Lord will mess all that up sometimes. Just to see what you're going to do sometimes. Are you going to bend? Are you going to yield? Are you going to be led by the Spirit of God? Are you going to be led by your daily routine? <laughs> okay, now, church, we have to understand that God wants to transform our weaknesses, right? That we inherited from our first parents, Adam and Eve. We all come along with them. That means that uh, these things have to be taught to you even as a little child. When you children are growing up, no one needs to tell you that you have to learn the word no. It's like you come out of the womb saying, no, mine. Mine's a good one. Mine, mine. You don't have to teach a child mine, right? They know what it means that when you're touching their stuff, that's mine. That's selfishness. That's rooted in their sinful nature. That's part of our weaknesses. Can I get an amen? And so we need to be taught the things of God so we understand that we have to be transformed and the only way we can be transformed and be a powerful effective christian is through the holy ghost amen that means that we are new creatures in christ jesus our salvation experience now that we've been saved we've been born again we've been set free now we go through a lifelong process of what's called sanctification that means God's doing a work in you. He's trying to clean you up. But guess what? You got to stick around long enough so that he can do a work in you. Well, I don't need to go to church. We'll get to that in a minute. I got some things I want to share tonight. Hallelujah. All right, y'all ready to get into the phlegmatic? Go with me to your page. And if you can see, I got my commentary today. So I got some things I'm going to share with y'all tonight that's going to blow your socks off. I hope you got socks on, because then your toes are going to blow off. Amen? We have fun. Hallelujah. Okay, so we're going to be in the second paragraph where it says, in the area of love on page 128. Are we there? Amen. Let's read. In the area of love and affection, we're talking about the phlegmatic. The phlegmatic is the most stable, watch this church, of all the temperament when it comes to love and affection. I love this. They do not smother sanguines, nor are they coldly distant. That's just so the opposite of the sanguine temperament. Sanguines, you got to understand your temperament. It's okay. But when you understand the phlegmatic versus the sanguine versus the melancholy versus the choleric 
Melancholies and cholerics don't need a lot of touch. They don't need a lot of holding. They're the ones that when you lay down, married couples, you stay on your side, I'm staying on my side. (laughs) I want to cuddle. You don't know my temperament. That's why God put me and pastor together. It was the perfect storm. Can I get a hallelujah? Can I get an amen? But I want to cuddle. For you sanguines that like to cuddle, you husbands or wives or whatever temperament, give them that. You got to give and take in a marriage, amen? If they want to hold and, and t- I <laughs> see they're, they're talk- over there looking at each other back there, Brother Jesse and Sister Isabel. <laughs> give them their five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes that they need. They'll be fine after you give them that whatever they need. Amen. That's a part of who they are. But it seems that the phlegmatic can take it and the phlegmatic can leave it if they need to. They don't have to have it, church. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. I got a witness in the church. Well, this isn't very churchy and this isn't very wordy. This isn't very spiritual. Well, hold on. Amen. Hold on. We'll get there. We need to understand some of these things so we know how to address them. Not everything is the devil, church. I'll say it again. Not everything is the devil. When I took this master's class with pastor, we just blamed everything on the devil. It's the devil. It's the devil. It's the devil. The devil made me do it. The devil made me do it. And it keeps you from taking inventory. There's no close examination on your own heart to figure out where you need some work done. Maybe it's rooted in my weaknesses, known as the flesh, known as the old man, known as the sin nature. Can I get an amen? And if you understand these things, how many knows that we are to know the strategies of the devil? He'll he'll solicit us, but we have to know what he's soliciting us to. Hallelujah. So not everything is the devil. Sometimes we need to take responsibility for what we've done in our lives. That makes us mature believers in Christ. When you start taking responsibility for your own life and not blaming others for where you are in the life that you're in right now. Amen? I didn't get a lot of shouting on that one. Because we love to blame people for where we are. We want to blame mom. Kids want to blame mom and dad for where you are and the condition you're living in right now. It's always someone else's fault. That's the generation we're raising right now is that it's everybody's fault and you owe me something. Are you hearing me, church? No one owes us anything. Are you hearing me, church? No one owes us anything. We need to do what God has called us to do. Hallelujah. They're observers who do not get involved. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll back up a little bit. Hurry. They do not smother, nor are they coldly distant. Are you with me, church? They can show a moderate amount of love and affection and have very realistic demands when it comes to how much love and affection they need and the number of people from which they need it. I love the fact that it says they're very realistic on how much love they want to receive and how much love they can give out. Are you hearing me? Sanguines need to learn that a little bit. They don't know how much, and they don't have a line there. They will give and take as much as you can give them. But phlegmatics seem to have a balance there. This is a beautiful temperament, church. It says the way they observe. Oh, let's back it up a little. Where we at? They can show moderate. Keep going with me down there. It says the phlegmatic has no fear of rejection and can handle unaffectionate or hostile people. That's a tough temperament, church. They have no fear of rejection. I'm going to line all the phlegmatics up here and give them all the tracks that we have in the church. And you're going to go out and hit the streets in Houston and hand out every track that I give you. Can I get an amen? You got to use that. There's something the way God has made you. God hasn't made a mistake the way he's made you, church. If he's made you a certain way, he's made you that way for a reason. You never come down and say, God, why? Does the one who God created tell his master, why did you make me this way? And if you continue to do so, he may put you back on the potter's wheel. And you don't want to go back on the potter's wheel. 
The potter's wheel, you know what the potter's wheel is? The clay. He takes the clay, he puts it on the potter's wheel, and starts to mold, crush, smash, and begin to form you how he wants you to be. So don't ever complain, God, why? Why am I not a choleric? Why am I not a melancholy? I want to be more like Pastor Jesse. No, I want to be like God has made me to be in this life. Because everyone was created the way God created you to do something in this life. And so you don't want to be like someone else. You can glean from each other for sure. By example, on how they present themselves as Christ-like. Absolutely. Follow me, the Apostle Paul said, because I follow Christ. Follow this ministry because we follow Christ and the Word of God as close as we can according to the book of Acts. If anything, you want to see how the church operates in this ministry, go read the book of Acts. We try to stay as close as we can to the book of Acts as much as possible so you as a body of believers can be blessed, above all things prosper, even as thy soul prospers. That's what the Word of God does, church. I know it challenges you sometimes. But if you ever come into a ministry like this and never feel challenged or convicted because of your lifestyle, then we're not doing or may not be preaching the very word that God has called us to be or to do. The entire counsel of God is what me and pastor are called to preach. Genesis to the book of Revelation. Can I get an amen? And I know we're starting to have some more events around here and things like that and we're starting to do certain things in the ministry. The bigger we get, the more this thing will take on legs by itself and start moving. Amen. Ministries will birth. People will come and say, I have a stirring in my spirit to do something. That's an exciting thing. And it's not an organization that we belong to. We are an organism. Can I get an amen? We are the body of Christ, church. And every one of you is a member of the body of Christ. And you are absolutely important and vital to the entirety of the church. If you're not here and a part of the body or somewhere else a part of the body, you are doing yourself a disservice and a disservice to the church where you should be serving. Amen? Come on now. That's good. I'm afraid that the church has forgotten that. And so now, instead of having the word of God and fellowship in the word, fellowship with one another, building each other up in our most holiest faith, it's become events and other things that it has invaded the church. She showed me something on Facebook. And when I looked at it, I said, oh, where, where's this club at? This is really, this is something. They had a dance floor, and they, were, they had the video, and they were doing the, the country and they were doing the, the sidestep or whatever. I don't, it wasn't Gumbia, it wasn't, uh, you know, Tejano, but it was, you know, country music and they were dancing. And then I went on a little further. She didn't show me the caption because she just wanted to see something. She already knew what she was showing me, but I was looking at something and I was watching it. I thought it was a club. And so all of a sudden, the video clip went to where there was a bull in the middle of the arena and some guy was on the bull like this and riding a mechanical bull. I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty crazy. But it was a church. <laughs> Are you hearing me? It was a church. It was a leadership, volunteer, whatever, that they had gathered, and they were honoring the volunteers and the leaders, and this was going on right in the church, merchandi merchandising the house of God. Idols coming into the church. And replacing the Holy Spirit. Oh, you're just being too critical, Pastor. No, I'm not. That's merchandising the house of God. That stuff does not belong in the house of God, church. You'll never see a mechanical bull at HGM. You're never going to see a dance floor where you have to come in. And I've turned the house of God into a dance place so you can have some place to go to and feel like you're connecting. You want to dance with your wife? You do it at home. Amen? Y'all didn't sound too excited on that one. I'm telling you, church, this is the last days. There's very few that operate in the Holy Ghost anymore. You go out there and you fight, it's a dry land. It's like a desert and you're looking for water. 
It's going to be very hard to get to a ministry and a church that you can drink from the rivers of living water and feel the Spirit of God being poured out upon the church because they're not exalting Jesus Christ no more and Him crucified. That's the only thing that's going to do it. So it becomes another gospel, it becomes another Jesus, another way for you to be saved and sanctified. I think somebody needed to hear that tonight, amen? We're talking about the phlegmatic. I told you church would get in there. When it comes to deep relationships, the phlegmatic deals with them as they do with most other things in their life. I love this. <laughs> they observers. They are observers who do not get involved and do not expend much energy. Okay, so when you hear that, you don't have to raise your hands. Phlegmatic temperament needs to be careful that they don't undernourish their relationships. Amen? Because you have a tendency to kind of withdraw and you can observe even your friendships with your brothers and sisters in Christ. You can observe that from a far distant. And the relationship begins to suffer. Can I get an amen? If that's not you, then I, let me tell you, if you're not operating in that and you're a phlegmatic temperament, guess what? The Holy Ghost has done a job in you. That is the fruit of the Spirit coming forth and helping you operate in love. Reaching out, esteeming others better than yourself, laying your life down so others have life, seeking the interest of others outside of yourself. Amen? Checking on your brother and sister, how you doing? Texting, what's up? How you doing? Calling you, making sure you're okay. And the body of Christ in this church is amazing at doing that. Someone goes down, you're texting, hey, are you okay? You know, part of the body, members of the church, always checking on each other, making sure you're okay. I'm praying for you. Or is every, Do you need anything? Do you need me to drop something off at your home? Do you need anything me to bring to you? Amen? Come on now. And me and pastor can feel y'all's prayers. Let me tell you. Very important that we pray for each other. Hallelujah. Especially in the temperature we're in in the, in the world right now. Their cool, watch this, complacent attitude can hurt the people that love them. The way they observe people can cause them never to give of themselves and hence never receive either. They also interact with God and Christ in the same way. Observing but never really getting involved and never really giving anything of themselves. Isn't that incredible? Okay, y'all ready? Because let me tell you something. We're going to get in the Word now. Let me tell you something. That right there is contrary to the entire will of God. Not getting involved, not interacting, not coming to church, not being a part of the body of Christ, not fellowshipping with one another, getting here a little early at 930 when the social is gathering. I'm going to go there. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm getting there so that I can get out of myself and I'm going to get there and let everybody see my light shine. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, right? You're a city on a hill. You have to allow your light to shine. I know some of you, my temperament's the same way. I could stay at home and never go nowhere. I will have DoorDash. I will have HEB. I will have everything be delivered to my house and never come out of my house. We got Amazon now. We have things right now in the earth that we don't have to come out of our home. Can I get an amen? When was the last time you went to the theater? The theater? The movies? I got Netflix. I don't go to movies. It's Amazon Prime. I got YouTube movies. Every, everything is right there so convenient that we don't have to leave our houses anymore. Amen? That's not a good thing, church. There was a time where kids didn't have all of that entertainment. They had to come out of their house and play in the dirt. And let me tell you one thing. We got developed at an early age being able to socialize because we were forced to talk to that neighbor that was across the street. <laughs> and we became friends with someone across the street and not friends on social media. 
Those aren't your friends. We got a thousand followers on Facebook. I know none of them. Are you hearing me, church? You talk to some people that are on social media. I have 5,000 friends, and I'm the most loneliest person. We're created for fellowship. We are social beings, church. Are you hearing me, church? You have to get to a place within the body of Christ here. You start getting to know your brothers and sisters. This is your community. If you're waiting to have that with me and pastor, oh, you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> are, are you hearing me, church? The sheep congregated with the sheep, right? And the pastor was always off to the side with the staff because he's got the staff and the rod because he's watching for the wolf to come in and attack the sheep. He's the one watching over the sheep. Sheep hung out with sheep. And let me tell you one thing. Sheep give birth to other sheep, not pastors. Pastors have to feed the sheep. That means you got to go get the people and bring them in. You have a job to do in here. Are you hearing me, church? I'm talking to every temperament in here as well as the phlegmatic. Every person who names the name of Jesus should be doing something with the kingdom of God. Matthew 28, the great commission that pastor preached was an amazing it, nobody understands. You talk to Christians and say, what is the Great Commission? I don't know. That's an indictment. That is an indictment to the body of Christ. I don't want to know what church you go to. If we ask someone here at HGM, what is the Great Commission? They're going to say, go into all the world and make disciples out of them. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Come on now. Are you doing that? I'm not an evangelist. I'm not an evangelist. I don't go. You don't have to be an evangelist, church. You don't have to be in one of the fivefold ministries to go out and tell someone that Jesus loves them. Hallelujah. We have become a church that when we come into the church, what can God do for me? When you come to church, you say, what can I do for God? Not what my country can do for me, but what I can do for my country. Amen. Have to go to John F. King. Come on now. We're so selfish. We are. We're all, we're third world country, we're communist. We haven't seen nothing yet. Oh no, this is nothing. We're, we're spoiled. Americans are spoiled. AC goes out, but we panic. Electricity goes out. You got people out in third world countries living in huts with no AC, no light, no nothing. That's why they're so ready to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, because it brings them a hope. We cannot base what we have in this life off of the stuff we have, church. Are you hearing me? Those things are, I, look, I'm not trying to come against your ambition and trying to get more for your family and all of that, but you keep everything in its right perspective when you're a Christian. First seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things shall be added on to you. Your priority should always be Christ-centered. Can I get an amen? Because what happens when you take your eyes off of Jesus, you take your eyes and your focus off of Jesus, you start taking your eyes and focusing on the stuff you have, and you start to measure your success on somehow the amount of blessings you have. Well, if I have this much, then that means I'm doing what God has called me to do. Not necessarily. Amen? The proof is, if you want to be my disciple, or if you want to glorify me, go and produce fruit. Are you fruit bearing? Are you a fruit tree? Are you hearing me, church? Are you bearing much fruit for the Lord? Fruit worthy of repentance. Amen? Isn't that what John the Baptist, we were talking about that earlier, John the Baptist, when they came to see him, he goes, these Pharisees, these Sadducees, these, the Sanhedrin council were coming to check on John the Baptist and what he was doing. He says, who warned you of God's impending judgment? Who, wore, who warned you of the wrath to come? That means they were just coming to be critical. They just came to hang out. They weren't really a part of what Jesus was doing. They just came to sit and leave. You don't have a part in this because you're playing around with God. He says, prove by the way you live that you've turned from your wickedness. That's the proof in the pudding, church, is the lifestyle you live on to the Lord is evidence to your repentance. 
If you've truly repented, you've truly asked God into your heart, you're truly living for Jesus, your life is going to yell from the top. Everybody's going to see the life you live. It's going to be a letter written by the Spirit of God that men can read. Amen? Am I ministering to somebody tonight? Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Is this good tonight? It's delicious. Very delicious. We're at the master's table. This is what it means to come to church, to get the word of God in you. Hallelujah. We'll see how far we get. We're going to stay here, but I want to share something with you because we're talking about the phlegmatic, how they interact with each other and how they interact with God, and they're very uninvolved. Amen? But I'm afraid that's a lot of the temperaments, just not the phlegmatics that are uninvolved. And especially if you get your eyes too focused on what's going on right now in the earth. Hallelujah. That you can start looking for answers inward. And you can't do that. So we got to get busy doing something, church. And the Apostle Paul is addressing some things here at Corinth. And he's talking to the Corinthians. And I want you to see this. He says, it is the one, the Apostle Paul talking, and only spirit who distributes all these gifts. Everybody say gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. The Holy Spirit decides, church, which gift you are to operate in the body of Christ. Man does not get to decide what you receive. It is the Holy Spirit as he wills to give you whatever office or gift that he's given you. The Apostle Paul is dealing with this issue because the gifts of the Spirit were welcomed in the Corinthian church. And so everybody was experiencing the move of the Holy Spirit. And gifts were being poured out on the body of Christ. And they were becoming spiritually puffed up and forgetting that it was the Spirit that gave you what you have. And so when they begin to be used by God, they thought it was them being used in a, in a sense that it's me doing this thing and the Spirit isn't doing this thing. Hallelujah. So you got to understand that man cannot call you into an office. Man cannot pull, put you behind the pulpit. It is the Holy Spirit that imparts to you what you shall be. Well, I don't know what I should be doing. If you don't know what you should be doing, I want everyone to hear me. If you don't know what you should be doing at this very moment, come to church. That's it. That's all I have. Isn't that easy? That means if you don't know what you should be doing right now at this very moment, I, I don't know what God has called me to do. I can clear that up for you real fast. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves. The gathering of yourselves. That means come to church, stay attached to the body of Christ, stay attached to the vine, who is Jesus Christ. You are the branch, for a branch can do nothing outside of the vine. If you separate yourself, you begin to die. Amen? You got to stay here long enough to figure out what God's going to do with you. And the Word of God helps you to get there. The Spirit of God helps you to get there. The pastor of the church helps you to get there. Even your brothers and sisters. Go to verse 12, the human body. Now, before we go there, I want you to hear something. I got something here, a note. Y'all enjoying this? Is this helping somebody? Listen to this. This is in my commentary. I want to read this. The phrase dividing to every man severally as he wills, the Holy Spirit, refers to the fact that the divine spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit, in his distribution, he never ignores the makeup, the characteristic, there's your personality, age, position, and other particular features of a person. In other words, the gift fits the man or woman. Did you see that? Did you hear that? I found that in my commentary. 
That means that when the Holy Ghost gives you something, it's going to fit your character. Are you hearing me, church? And if the Lord has something for you to do, and he's calling you to do something, he has very well equipped you because how he's made you. The rest will be the Holy Ghost. The rest will be getting your weaknesses and that part of who you are out of the way. And it is a work, church. Some get a little further than others because some are willing to dive in and consecrate themselves wholly onto the Lord. That means I'm done with the world. Some of us take a little longer getting there because we still have a lot of attachments to the world. And we're not ready to cut certain things away. We're only willing to give this much and then the rest you kind of walk out and you never really get to that place where God has called you. Because you're still hanging on to the things of the world. Amen. And then you see that brother or sister and you don't understand why God is doing what they're doing in them. And you see that they're being promoted. You see that they're being elevated because they've decided to answer the call and consecrate themselves wholly onto the Lord. That means they're setting themselves aside. So when you see your brothers and sisters in Christ coming and growing and showing, it's because they've decided that they're going to give their lives completely and wholly to the Lord. It's a complete surrender, church. And so we see in verse 12, the human body has many parts. But the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews. Some of us are Gentiles. Some of us are slaves. Some of us are Hispanic. Some of us are Salvador. Some of us are some background. He's saying and he's dealing with the Corinthians because some of them came in with different, different ethnic backgrounds as well as economical backgrounds as well as social status. But in the eyes of God, we are all equal, church. Amen. He says, there's no longer Jew or Gentile. He says, I broke down that wall of hostility between Jew and Gentile. It, there, are, there are now one in the eyes of God. There's no longer slave or free. doesn't matter if you have money or that one doesn't have money. We're all part of the same body in this church. Can I get an amen? So we don't treat anyone different when they come through those doors, whether they have a million dollars or whether they have one dollar to their name. Isn't that beautiful? Because that's the way God sees us as a body of believers. And the Apostle Paul is trying to lay, lay some groundwork for the church to show them that it doesn't matter how much God uses you. You're still the equal in everyone as we're here all working together. Amen. Just because I preach doesn't mean I'm greater than you. I may have more anointing on me because of what I do. I may have more responsibilities, but doesn't make me greater than you in the eyes of God. It's quite different in the church. Hallelujah. The world doesn't operate like that. That's why we come out of the world system. Hallelujah. The world looks at someone who has a million dollars and their status changes. You know, cozy up to them. Try to get some favors from them. Our favor comes from God. Not man, church. And when you understand that everything comes to you from God, even the way the world works, you won't even be attracted to it no more because you know your provider is Jehovah Jireh. Mm. <laughs> I get excited <laughs> because man may bring me some bad news, but my God has the good news. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on now. Get me happy. Happy, happy, happy. Happy all the time. Thank God I'm born again. I'm on my way to heaven. No, y'all never heard that? I tried, Lord. Be in the Lord. God, I'm born again. See, I messed it up. We're all in one accord. I knew that last part didn't go. You see, I'm not a worship singer. I'm a preacher and a minister of the gospel. That means I don't get upset because I can't worship. You shouldn't get upset because you can't preach. God made you how he made you and you fit where you fit because you are who you are in Christ. And what he's given you benefits the entire body. I'm going to get to some of that in a minute. I love that. Come on now. I got Brother Dell going now. That means I'm doing good up here. Holy Ghost. He says, but we've all been baptized into one body 
by one spirit and we all share the same Holy Spirit. That means we've all been made to drink into one spirit, church. We're not in here. You have a different spirit. I have a different spirit. You're moving into different spirit. He's moving. It's all the Holy Spirit as he moves in the church. One cohesive organism. We're all part of each other. Amen. We're not an organization. That means that she's a part of me and I'm a part of Sister Norma. Amen. That's when I see her. I see the right hand that I need in the church. We all need each other. We all need the parts of the body of Christ in order for us to grow and to be nurtured and to go forth and do what God has called us to do. Every one of you is vital in the body of Christ. Watch this. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says I'm not a part of the body because I'm not a hand, that does not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, I'm not a part of the body because I'm not an eye, would that make it any less part of the body? Absolutely not. Because I'm not a pastor doesn't mean that you're any less part of the body. Amen. I'm not a worship person up here, so I'm, doesn't make you any less part of the body. Hallelujah. It's like saying it like this. I'll give you an illustration. Everybody loves to eat. Amen. I like to eat. <laughs> You're a Christian, you become eaters in Christianity. You know, we like to eat in Christianity because we ain't got much else to do. Watch. <laughs> we eat. We love to eat. We just got to, you know, everything in moderation. So we need to self-discipline in some areas. That's not my point. Look, your hands, your arms, your mouth, your teeth, your arms, your hand has to pick up the food, and you have to put it into your mouth. The teeth have to grind it down, has to go down. And the stomach does the rest. But let me say this. My hand, my arm, and my teeth, my mouth, they start saying my stomach is being lazy because I don't see the stomach doing anything. Are you hearing me, church? I don't see the stomach doing anything, so that means it's lazy. We don't see certain people doing things, so that means they're lazy. They're not necessarily. Are you hearing me, church? And so these things that we think we don't need that are covered and hidden are the most vital in the church. They're the most important in the church. You may not see the more visible gifts, church, operating, but the ones that are less seen are usually sometimes the most important ones. I'll say it like this. You see Mr. and Mrs. Hernandez. Oh, my gosh, let me tell you about these two. Let me just exhort them a little bit. You don't see them visibly all the time doing something in the church. And so you may think somehow they're less important. But let me tell you, our church is standing a lot because of what they do. They're the most vital part of this ministry because of their prayer life. Because they intercede on the behalf of this church. They're praying for the service even before we have to make sure signs and wonders that follow. And there's some of you that, you know, your gift may not be visible, but you're the most vital part of this ministry. And so those parts, we take a little more care. And those that seem like they're less important, we cover them more. And not only those that are vital, there could be those that are less because their faith may be a little weaker. They may not have a dollar to their name. And those are the ones that we cover the most. Because the ones who are honored, the ones who are strong, the ones who have the more visible gifts, the Bible says they don't need a lot of care. Let me hear you. Let me, let me tell you, church. Why? God has made it that way. God has designed it like that. Isn't that beautiful? That means the strength and the grace that some of you walk in, there's a reason for that so that you can come into the body of Christ and lift up the one that's a little weaker than you. So God has made you strong for a reason. So you can help lift up parts of the body of Christ that need help. God has given you that. You walk in that. Isn't that beautiful? So the one who's a lot stronger, Sister Norma, strong Christian. She don't need a lot of this. Oh, it's going to be, oh, it's going to be okay. Oh, let me cry. It's going to be okay. Oh, no. Come on. You got to get to church. We got to, we don't, she doesn't need, oh, no motivation. She knows what she's got to do in the Lord. And she knows how to lift others up in the Lord. Amen. She has that gift of encouraging others in the Lord. That defies all of her temperament. Are you hearing me, church? That's Holy Ghost right there. 
That's fruit bearing right there. But you got to stick around the body of Christ. Amen. I can never say that I don't need the hand. or I don't need the ear. I don't need the, 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 the beautiful foot. Hallelujah. How am I going to walk? What if we were all one eye in here? We wouldn't do nothing. We'd be a cyclops. We'd be a monster. What if we were a bunch of pastors sitting around here with no sheep? It just doesn't work, church. Every one of you is vital to the church. That means you're a part of an organism. That's the body of Christ, the mystical body of Jesus Christ that you've been born into. You're a part of the family of God, church. Oh, my gosh. I'll be getting my brother's sister's number. What's your number, brother? Let me get your number, brother. I'm going to call you this week. We're going to hang out. We're going to fellowship. We're going to get in some word, do something, have some coffee together. The friends that you're looking for are right here in the church. Can I get an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Give me a hand clap. Can I get a hand clap, brother? <laughs> Come on. Married couples, married couples. Reach out to another married couple. Single, sister. There's a little buzz going around. Sister Eve over here. She's getting the singles group going. That's just not something she planned on doing. It's just falling on her. Something's going on over there. All the singles. Go to Sister Eve. There's something going on there. Amen? Come on now. Don't be interested. Don't, I don't want to go out there and I don't want to put myself. I don't, wanna, uh, don't get out of that house. Get off that computer. Get off the TV. Get out there and socialize with your brothers and sisters. Develop some of those muscles getting outside of your home. Don't let this pandemic close you off, church. Amen? I had somebody, I went to the doctors the other day. No, it wasn't for no COVID. <laughs> Not everything's COVID, church. Amen. Come on, man. Jeez. I got a headache. It's COVID. It's COVID. <coughs> it's COVID. It's COVID. <laughs> My gosh. We forget about the flu. Did it just disappear? Anyway, I went to get some tests done, just normal checkup and thing like that. Did the stress test, on the treadmill, did the stress, stress test and all this. But a little guy comes in, young Young man, you could tell he just got out of college, and he came in, and I was talking to the tech lady before he came in, and she was getting me set up for my, my, my test and everything, and, and I told her, I said, is it okay if I leave the mask off? I can't leave the mask on while I'm running on a treadmill and pass out. And so I told her, I said, is it okay if I leave the mask off? She said, I'm fine, but she did it just like this, very, very sarcastic. The tech may not be okay with it, though. I said, that's fine. I'll ask him when he comes in. We'll ask him when he comes in. That's what she said. He comes in, and this gentleman looked like he had a biohazard suit on, like something out, <laughs> like looked like out of you know Outbreak. You ever seen the movie Outbreak? He, he looked. Like, he had the mask on, and he had this big old giant, looked like a force shield around head shield. I was like, and he had gloves on. He had, he looked like he was working in a germ lab. I'm telling you, church, it was crazy. He walked in, and she asked him, is it okay if he doesn't wear his mask? And I could discern his spirit already. Fear just jumped all over him. You know, these young people, man, it's this, oh, this pandemic has wrecked our young people. Don't believe what they're saying out there, young people. Don't let fear get on you. Just kick it out and say, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Through the whole pandemic, we've been that way. And so, you know, he looked, he looked very fearful and very nervous. Has he been vaccinated? Have you been vaccinated? Have you been vaccinated? I said, oh, no, I haven't been vaccinated. He started moving. He started moving around. Like I was like, wow, this is crazy. You know what I thought? To, I said, you know what, Lord, I'm just gonna go there. I'm just gonna go there. You know, I get, I go there. You gotta know my temperament. I said, Lord, you gotta hold me back in some of these situations. <laughs> I see the door open. I'm gonna get messy. I said, Lord, I'm gonna get a little messy right now. I like to see where people are. I said, you know, let me ask you a question. I can see that you're a little fearful. I said, but you've been vaccinated. You got a mask on and you got a shield on. Shouldn't I be the one fearful? <laughs> Shouldn't I be the one in fear? I, I told my, I, I told, I'm, not the, I'm the one that hasn't been vaccinated and I'm the one not wearing the mask. But yet you're in fear. You see how much the government has messed our people up? He's got all the necessary fixings and yet he's walking in fear. Why? You've been vaccinated, everybody should be fine. So I left it like that. I didn't go any more further than that. I didn't want to get too, 
But I was waiting, you know. I had some other conversation, dialogue with him. But <sighs> why did I say all that? Somebody need to hear that? That blessed somebody tonight? <laughs> amen? Can I get an amen? We need each other. We're the body of Christ, church. We need one another. We can't do this by ourselves. We're in the last days. This, this, God's about to wrap this thing up, church. And we need to start gathering ourselves more and more as we see the day approaching. Jesus Christ is coming home for his bride. He's coming to get us, church, and take us home. Can I get an amen? Come on, let's stand.